My name is Patrick Clark. I'm the session costume designer for Oklahoma. And we are approximately two weeks away from Q to Q for Oklahoma. So we're quite far along. The usual way, Doug Lemke phoned me and said, would you be interested in doing Oklahoma? I went, okay, where? <laughs> On the festival stage, I went, Okay, sure. <laughs> I found it interesting that, particularly in the late 30s into the 40s, you have a lot of American regionalist painting, uh, paintings of farmland, of the, of the West, because the West was slowly changing too, it was modernizing. Right? So I looked at people like Thomas Hart Benton. I looked at people like Grant Wood, the famous American Gothic, because they all looked at farming life from the 30s and 40s. In a way, almost nostalgic, because sometimes farming life is not nostalgic in any way, it's just hard work. But that's where I went to, rather than trying to go too far back into the reality of the 1890s. It's a fine line. Well, the costumes are probably more grounded in a certain reality because no matter what clothing is clothing, you can't you can't go too far from what it is. Um, not only that, but then you have to be able to dance in it, which you know, dance clothing is totally different from costumes in that sense, uh, because the actors have to get their arms over their heads, be able to turn cartwheels and things like that, which you and I could probably do in our own clothes, but then our shirts would pop out and. You know, we'd have to rearrange ourselves. So dancers have to be able to do it and still look magically beautiful at the end of it all. So you run into that kind of problem. Again, one of the interesting things when you look at the pictures, because we look at the actual photographs of cowboys and farmers, is the darkness of their clothing. Because you think, oh, we like it, or you think it's dust colored, or things like that. But it's still late Victorian, right? It, you find a lot of blues, a lot of indigos checks, a lot of homespuns, uh, small prints. I mean, it's not, you're not rushing off to buy silks for the show. You're, you're basically buying cottons and linens, wools for some of the suits, uh, leather for a lot of the chaps. Cowboys, and the thing that I was really amazed at is, you know, when you look at the pictures, you forget how uniform men are in their dressing. And a cowboy is a uniform. Like, one cowboy doesn't want to look too different from the other cowboy. I was, you know, we were, I was, joking with the girls in the water, but I said, you know, women like to show off a bit and be noticed. Men like to blend in with the group. They don't want to show off too much because there's a kind of pack mentality. So you kind of, they kind of all look alike in a way. You look at the photo, they're all dressed the same. You know, they got boots, pants, shirt, vest, jacket, cowboy hat, chaps. Now the variations are in the personality, is how they wear them, whether they're, you know, they're neat, whether they're not, how they, and finding the colors. And so for the men, they tend to be darker, they tend to be earth tones. The other thing I wanted was the sense of some kind of, I mean, the prairies, when you see the prairies, is kind of bleached, particularly by the end of the summer. You know, it's, the corn is as high as an elephant's eye, as they say, but by then, the leaves are even starting to turn yellow, you know, by, by the end of August, in that part of the world. The, the corn is starting to turn yellow. There's that kind of, it's, the, it's still green, but you're moving into the fall. So you wanted those kind of, autumnal colors, but yet you still needed some vibrant colors of green. So there are bits of green here and there, and Laurie particularly I kept towards green to give her kind of freshness and a youth to her. Uh, Aunt Ella is really kind of the colors of the, of the, of the earth, in many ways, this is curly. Um, the girls, as I said, are largely blues, darks, indigos, pinks, greens, except for maybe Gertie. Gert Gertie Cummings, the, the girl that no one in the community really likes, of course, is a bit of a show-off, so she's a bit louder than the rest. Ado Annie is in kind of roses and pinks and kind of, you know, a bit of red. She's as close as you can get to red in the West and still maintain your reputation. Then we go to the dream ballets where we go to something different. I mean, and again, it's Laurie's dream, and so in many ways, in that, the girls are all dressed in essentially what Laurie is wearing, but a pale version of her. She's wearing her box social dress, so it's blue and white. But they're dressed in sort of off-white and sort of gray blues, but they're softer versions of her. The boys are kind of dream versions of cowboys that are all, and they're in kind of blue checks, and sort of, but blue fabric chaps as opposed to leather chaps. 
Then when she goes to the kind of Judd's part of the dream, the Judd's girls are, are basically the girls in, the, in his little pinup girls who have come to life. And so there we go to fuchsias and pinks and blacks and kind of bright, bright colors. So they're, they're, they're very simple and they're, they're, they're not a lot because again, the show, as far as timeline goes, it all takes place largely between one day to the next day and then the wedding, which is a couple of weeks later.